Narada said, O oh dear Father Brahma, with your mind fixed on Shiva, you are blessed indeed. Please explain this again, still more precisely. Brahma said, I, the lotus born, once called together all the sages and all the gods and addressed them lovingly with these good words. If you have faith in permanent happiness, if you desire the achievement of the same, all of you shall come along with me to the shores of the milk ocean. On hearing these words, they accompanied me to the place where Lord Vishnu, the benefactor of everyone, was stationed. O sage, on reaching the place, the gods bowed down with palms joined in reverence and prayed to the Lord of the universe, Janardana, Lord of the gods. On seeing Brahma and other deities standing there, Vishnu remembered the lotus-like feet of Shiva and spoke these noble words. Vishnu said, Why have you all, Brahma and others, and the celestial sages, come? What is the matter now? Please tell me lovingly. On being asked thus by Vishnu, as well as by me, the deities bowed to him with devotion and said, Whose worship shall we perform regularly for the removal of misery? On hearing these words, the Lord, favorably disposed to the devotees, spoke as follows, favoring me and the devas. O Brahma, hear. You and these devas have already heard this, yet I shall repeat it to you and to the devas. It has been seen. It is being seen. Then why is it being asked now? O Brahma, Lord Shiva, the destroyer of all miseries, shall be served always by all who wish to achieve things. He himself has told me as well as Brahma particularly about this. His worship shall never be forsaken by those who wish to attain happiness. A wonderful example has been narrated to and seen by you all. When they abandoned worshipping the Lord of the Devas, Maheshwar in the form of the Linga, the sons of Tara perished along with their kinsmen. They had been enchanted by me. By my illusion they were driven far by me. When they were devoid of Shiva, they were all destroyed and exterminated. Hence, Shiva, in the form of the phallic image, shall be worshipped always. He, the foremost among deities, shall be served with special faith. It is by the worship of the Linga of Shiva that all good men, devas, daityas, I and you, O Brahma, are sustained. How is it that it was forgotten by you? Hence, O Brahma, his Linga shall be regularly worshipped whatever may be the aim. Shiva shall be worshipped whatever the desire may be. If an hour or even a moment is spent without the worship of Shiva, it is a loss. It is an imperfection, a great foible, blindness, stupidity, and foolishness. Those who are devotedly attached to Shiva those whose minds are turned toward Shiva and those who constantly remember Shiva never become victims of misery. Those who desire magnificent buildings, beautiful ornaments, beautiful women, wealth to satiety, sons and grandsons, health, splendid body, extraordinary status, heavenly happiness, and final salvation or profound devotion to the great Lord, shall duly worship Shiva by virtue of their merit accumulated by them. Sure success will be his who regularly worships Shiva Linga with great devotion. He will never be afflicted by sins. Brahma said, Thus exhorted, the devas knelt before Vishnu and requested for Lingas for the achievement of the desires of all people. O foremost among sages, then, on hearing the request, Vishnu, eager for the uplift of all living beings, told Vishvakarman, I too told him. 
O Vishvakarma, at my bidding, Shiva's auspicious lingas shall be made and given to all devas. At our bidding, Vishvakarma made lingas and gave them to the devas according to their status. O foremost among sages, I shall tell you the same. Please listen. Indra took a linga made of ruby. The son of Vishravas, Kubera, took a linga of gold. Dharma took a linga of yellow stone. Varuna took a linga of dark blue hue. Vishnu took a linga of sapphire. I, Brahma, took a linga of gold. The Vishvadevas and the Vasus took silver lingas. O sage, the Ashvini Devas took the brazen and earthen lingas. Goddess Lakshmi took a crystal linga. The twelve Adityas, sons, took lingas made of copper. The moon took a linga made of pearl, and the god of fire took a linga of diamond. Great Brahmanas and their wives chose lingas of earth. Maya took a linga of sandalwood, and Sheshanaga took a coral-made linga. The goddesses took lingas of butter, the yogins took lingas of bhasma, the yakshas took lingas of curd, and the deity Chaya took a linga of beaten flour. The goddess Brahmani worships, of course, a linga of ratna, precious gems. Bana and others worshipped lingas of mercury. Thus, different kinds of lingas were given to them by Vishvakarma, which the devas and the celestial sages worship regularly. After giving the devas the various lingas from a desire for their benefit, Vishnu explained the mode of worship of Shiva to me, Brahma. After listening to it, I, Brahma, the foremost among devas, came back to my abode highly delighted in mind. O sage, after reaching my place, I explained the mode of worshipping Shiva that yields desires to the devas and sages. O sages and devas, be pleased to hear with love and pleasure. I am going to explain lovingly the mode of worshipping Shiva that confers worldly pleasures and salvation. <laughs> Life as a human being is very difficult to obtain among all living beings. O devas, O sages, a life in a good family is still more difficult. After obtaining the still more difficult birth in a Brahmana family of good conduct on account of great merits, one shall perform rites assigned to propitiate Shiva. No one shall transgress duties assigned to his caste. Charitable gifts and sacred rites shall be performed to the extent of one's capacity and affluence. The tapo yagna, sacrifice in the form of penance, is far superior to thousands of karma yagnas, ritualistic sacrifices. The japa yagna, sacrifice in the form of japa, is far superior to thousands of tapo yagnas. There is nothing superior to dhyana yagna, meditation, which is the cause of true knowledge, since the yogin is able to see his favorite deity of equanimity through meditation. Shiva is always present near a person set in meditation. There is no necessity for any atonement or expiation for a person of true knowledge. O gods, persons who have realized Brahman through pure learning need not perform any rite. They are freed from happiness and misery, virtue and evil, sacrifice and japa, meditation, and rules regarding the same. By virtue of their learning, they are free from base passions and physical changes and decay. The linga present in the hearts of yogins is the purest, blissful, auspicious, undying, all-pervasive, and unsullied. O brahmanas, linga is of two types, the exterior and the interior. The exterior is gross and the interior is subtle. Those who are engaged in ritualistic sacrifices and do regularly worship the gross linga are unable to steady the mind by meditating upon the subtle. 
Hence, they use the gross linga. He who has not mastered the linga of the mind, the subtle one, must perform the worship in the gross linga, and not otherwise. The pure, undying, subtle linga is ever perceived by the masters of true knowledge, in the same manner as the gross one is thought to be very excellent by those who are not yogins. If we consider properly, there is nothing else for the realized being. Whatever is Nishkala or Sakala in the whole universe is of the form of Shiva. This must be constantly thought of in the mind. Even if they are devoid of the ultimate perfect knowledge, no defect or deficiency can be ascribed to them. Rules regarding what shall be done and what not shall be done are not binding on them. The knower, of course, is not at all bound by actions. Even if he continues the householder's life, just as the lotus standing in water is not contaminated by the water. Till the realization of perfect knowledge, a man should continue the ritualistic worship of Shiva. To convince the world, the rituals must be continued. Just as the sun is reflected in many vessels with water, in the same manner, O Devas, know that the Supreme Brahman Shiva assumes the forms of whatever is seen or heard in the world, real or unreal. There is difference in the vessels, but not in the water that they contain. This is what those who know the real meaning of the Vedas say. Lord Shiva is within the heart of beings in this world. Of what avail are the idols to those who have this real knowledge? Having an idol is very auspicious for a person who has no such knowledge. It is a ladder that enables him to climb to a higher position. It is very difficult to climb to a position without a support. The idol is only a means to achieve the Nirguna Shiva. The attainment of the Nirguna through Saguna is certainly possible. In this manner, the symbols of all lords are conducive to a steady faith and belief. This lord is very great, and this is the mode of worship of that lord. If there is no idol, of what avail are scents, sandalwood, paste, flowers, etc.? Till the realization of true knowledge, the idol shall necessarily be worshipped. If anyone does not worship the idol before he attains perfect knowledge, his downfall is sure. O Brahmanas, hear the true statement of facts. For the same reason as mentioned before, the duties of your own caste shall be performed assiduously. Worship shall be performed where devotion is directed. Without worship and charitable gifts, sin cannot be kept at bay. As long as there is a vestige of sin in the body, achievement need not be expected. When the sin is wiped off, all rites will bear fruit. If there is dirt in the cloth, the dyeing process cannot be carried out effectively. After the cloth is bleached, any dye can be applied to it effectively. Similarly, when the body is freed of its dirty stuff by proper worship of deities, the dye of knowledge can stick to it whence true knowledge will arise. The root of true knowledge is unswerving devotion. The root of knowledge, too, is devotion. The root of devotion is good action and the worship of one's own favorite deity. The root of that is the good preceptor. A good preceptor is secured only through association with good people. If one associates with good people, one will come across a preceptor. From the preceptor, mantras and the modes of worship can be learned. Bhakti, devotion, is generated by worship, and it gives birth to vidya, knowledge. Vidya leads to jnana, perfect knowledge and realization of the Supreme Brahman. Where there is perfect knowledge, differentiations cease altogether. When differentiation ceases, the misery of mutually clashing opposites vanishes. 
He who is free from the tangle of opposites and the miseries attendant on them assumes the form of Shiva. O celestial sages, when the mutually clashing opposites do not afflict, a person endowed with true knowledge has neither happiness nor misery. Rules of do's and don'ts do not bind him. Such a person who has not entered a household life is rare to meet with. If there is such a one, he will quell all sins by his mere sight. Even the holy centers praise such a person of knowledge. Devas and all sages consider him the supreme Brahman, Shiva himself. The holy centers or the deities in the form of clay or rock idols are not equal to him. They take time in sanctifying persons. But a man of true knowledge purifies through his sheer vision. As long as one continues the life of a householder, he shall perform the worship of the idols of the most excellent of the five deities with pleasure. Or it is enough if Shiva alone is worshipped. The root is the most important. When the root is watered, O gods, the branches are well cared for. O excellent sages, if the branches are taken care of, it does not necessarily mean that the root is cared for. When the deities are propitiated, the same analogy holds good. Our aim shall be to propitiate Shiva, if we are sensible. O gods, if Shiva is worshipped, all the gods are worshipped. Hence, a person who wants to do good to all living beings shall worship Shiva, the benefactor of the world, for the attainment of all desires.